Okay, welcome. That's my first attempt to actually make a guide, but I've been thinking about this for quite some time, so I think it's a really good opportunity for me to actually do that because I'm usually uploading um, gameplays. But now I think it's time for me to do a little bit something different, a little bit of a guide. So I'm going to start the series that I'm going to do guide mainly for post 5 since I, at least for the last year, I'm, I'm uh, mostly playing post 5 and post 4. So you know, without losing time, let's start explaining um, the position five role. Moving up and down, side to side, like a roller coaster. Cool. So, here is the first thing that you need to do, like you need to know about the position five. Right? The position five is actually a role that you can actually gain MMR. I, I've heard a lot of things, you know, you can't gain MMR, it's too hard. And that is true, like you can't actually solo carry a game as position five. That's... The hero has to be really specific to do that, you know? So in the post five role, what you want to do is actually create the best possible conditions for your team, or mainly for your post five in the lane at least, and then later in the mid game, again, for your, with your post two, three, and four, um, to help your post five, what you want to do is create the best possible conditions for your team to carry you, okay? Right. You have to keep that in your mind that you will not be able to do solo plays unless you have some kind of Shadow Shaman, maybe you have some Lion versus Morphling, you know, where you can just solo kill him, maybe some post for Scarab mates that can do solo plays, but most likely the classic position fives, you know, the Leech, the Crystal Maiden, even if you're like Bane will not be able to do solo plays. What you want to do is good laning understanding and later on play with your cores, you know, find good pickles, good smokes, etc. Okay. So I'm um, gonna explain like right now Crystal Maiden, right? Crystal Maiden is probably after 10 my most played hero. I love her, she's great. She's great in the immortal level, but she's not that great below that. Okay, so let's let's break down the Crystal Maiden as a hero. What does Crystal Maiden do? So Crystal Maiden is considered to be a lane dominator, okay? Yes, Crystal Maiden dominates lane. She's really strong. She has some really good nukes, level 1, Crystal Nova, super strong, you secure range grip, you can actually use it to attack both of the, you know, side laners, plus 3 and plus 4. She's super strong, with one spell you do like 260 damage, super strong, level 2, Frostbite, you, oh, that's why, you know, you usually skip uh, Arcane Aura early on, so you usually go for Mango, so you level 2 you can go for the kill, okay? And... While she's strong in the lane, she's quite squishy, so positioning is really important in the hero, okay? You want to position yourself on in a way that you will not get caught and you will always try to harass your opponent without being harassed, okay? I'm gonna show like three laning stages for my Crystal Maiden, one that's really strong, one that's, you know, I'm kind of playing on autopilot and one that I felt like I could play way better and you see how positions, you know, kind of screwed up with me and this is why this is a hero I don't actually suggest on lower MMR heroes, um, sorry, players and I mainly, you know, if you're like divine above, you can actually pick it and it's actually, the results are really good. So let's start. I like these starting items. I've seen a, a lot of players, you know, going for six mangoes, and all I'm thinking is, why do you need six mangoes, uh, sorry, six tangos early on, right? Why do you need six tangos? Are you gonna use six tangos the first minute? No. So, you, if you need more regen with the first um, courier ship, you know, you can just bring more tangos and more consumables. I like two sentry wards here. The reason why I like two sentry one to block their camp, one to, you know, de-ward mine, most likely. And the rest is like a salt for my carry. Three mangoes because I'm gonna go level two frostbite. We do know that, and of course one clarity. If I want, like, if I'm completely out of mana and I wanna pull, I have a full time to actually use a clarity, right? So I block the camp here. I like this word in the lower member bracket. You know, they place a word here, so you know, with uh, one stone to birds. I think that's the expression, right? So you will able to de work that as well. Now, do you contest runes or do you not contest runes? Personally, I find that I, you know, when I contest rune. Sometimes I die, um, so you know in my in my latest games I prefer not to do that unless I'm super strong. Maybe I have something like a juggernaut, and you know he's gonna come with me. And well, that's it. So the first thing that you want to do in um, in your games is to understand the map, right? So we have a troll crystal maiden. It's super strong lane. It is super strong lane, right? And on the other hand, we have double melee Mars Air Spirit. So the only thing I need to, you know, to 
be afraid of is not to get caught, not to be able to use my spells when they are on top of me. So if I'm playing in this area, right, this area, Air Spirit can actually trade with me. And why would I do that? I don't want to trade with Air Spirit because when you have a position on enemy, an enemy position for melee, you can actually trade in the lane. So if I position myself on the other side of where he is, then he's he, he has nothing better to do. You know, he's better chance to actually pull the wave if he has boots. Okay. Now I also use a sentry here. Most likely I do that because I might find the other word here. You know, sometimes they place it here, some place they place it somewhere there. But most importantly, uh, in my bracket at least, they tend to block it immediately, right? So I see Earth Spirit here. Um, I was ready to skill Frostbite actually at this moment, so I make sure it's unblocked. And look at that. We have to break down some things on how to win the lane. You know, the most basic one is secure the range group. Everybody knows that. I feel like, you know, if you don't know that, you might as well, you know, need to um, understand even more basic things. Secure the range group. If you can do that with Crystal Nova, and if you can do it, I like, by the way, this guy's name. And if you can do it, Crystal Nova, and on top of that, harass the enemy offlaner, that's great. The second thing is that don't secure the range grip if you feel like your position one can do it by themselves. Let's say you have the post three, like let's say it's post three and post four instead of post one and post five. If you have a Mars, you don't want to have a Mirana, for example, you don't want to arrow the creep, you're gonna rip you anyway. So you might as well let him do that and keep the arrow for something more important, okay? And look at that. The second thing that you want to do is secure level two before them. So you want eight creeps, if you like, for both of the heroes to secure level two. That's two creep waves. If you deny one creep, one creep in a creep wave, you need to wait for the third creep wave. So all you want to do is take every single creep, like not last it, like rather than not getting denied every single time. So you get level two, they're still level one, you force them because you have doubled the spells. And especially with a hero like Troll and Crystal Maiden, that's super important. So it's actually a little bit of a favorable matchup. But for example, if Mars and Earth Spirit get level two before us, they can easily kill me. Okay. And a hero, generally any post five, at least range post five, even the strongest one like Bane, Witch Doctor, uh, even Warlock with like a little bit high health. If you have two melees or post three, post four on top of you, you usually die. That's why usually the position five do not really kill, rather than they just try to harass. And you know, if they get jumped on, you can always turn the fight back because you're like low health. But we'll see more on that later on. So to sum up, level two before them, then you force things. There are exceptions to that rule, but usually that's a rule. The exceptions are something like Juggernaut. She's level two power spikes, like meh, you know, like whatever. She has level one power spike, okay? So you might as well try to force them, force them um, from, um, from level one. The last thing is 2v1 scenario. Whenever you find an opportunity to for two people to corner, to focus on one hero, you see how this guy... Fuck. <laughs> you see how this guy, where is he? He's here. He's just too far away. That's a 2v1 already here, okay? So you might as well try to focus this guy. And you see how he's alone and we just try to focus him? And so many right clicks, you know? Like, how many right clicks do we actually get on top of him? That's a lot. And this is how you win lanes. You don't kill. This is what I mean. You usually harass and then just win the trade war, you know, with the rage and so on. Constantly bringing consumables, right? You only go for items like boots if you have won the lane, if the lane stage is over, okay? And all of a sudden, we just deny everything. I'm going to show the last hit. And then the air spirit just pulls. Okay. Now, I've seen also some players letting this camp uh, unblocked so they can take advantage of it later on. You know, if the lane is pushed so they can pull this one, I prefer to block it personally. Okay. And now, another question I also get often is what do you do when uh, they're post for just like this air spirit just pulls a wave? And the answer is you just follow him and you just split the lane into 1v1. Okay. You just follow him. Otherwise, you, this guy's gonna get a full creep wave here, full XP, and we, me and Troll are just gonna share this creep wave, which is like not really efficient, okay? I was practicing my and boom, another Crystal Nova, right? I really want you to, to think of that. I know that with Crystal Maiden it's really good, but even with other heroes like Zekiro, for example, where you can get dual breath on top on two people, and I've seen a lot of Zekiro players, you know, waiting for level three, which is like really big spike because dual breath deals almost double the damage. But again, you, whenever you find an opportunity to go for that, you just go for it. And, you know, we just try to 
Let's go back a little bit to Sobat one more time. Secure Crypt, no one is going to take that and harass Mars as well. It's perfect, right? It's perfect. So what we want to do is get level 2. And this is what I mean. You get level 2, and I want you to understand that even if, you know, the bracket that you play, maybe it's Archon, maybe it's Crusader, if you initiate and you pink like, like a maniac, you know, they will follow up with you, you know? And even if this guy doesn't die, if he's alive, practically, in, in like, in, in real Dota, he's dead. He doesn't contest, he will not take XP, he's dead for us, okay? Ideally, we want to, to kill him, but, you know, sometimes um, it happens. Okay, so one last thing that I want to, to explain is when do you pull? Okay, when do you pull? When do you half pull? When do you like full pull? When do you stack and pull? And we have to understand also some really basics about um, the lane. So usually the position three and four are stronger than position one and five, just because again we'll show up later in the game in, in other examples. You get to pick um, something like Grave Stroke, okay, and then you have something like Morphling Terrorblade, which don't really synergize as well. On the other hand, the post three and four usually synergize really good. Tight Hand Rubik, Sun King um, Lena, or um, I don't know, uh, Range plus Clockwork, you know, as a post for roll. And just because in the mentality of the post 3 and post 4, we have to kill the position 1, we have to kill the enemy carry, we have to screw up with him, okay? And in the in the position 1 and 5, it's like, okay, I'm gonna pick that as post 5, and the position 1, you know, usually the carry player is like, okay, I wanna play that. Yeah, I don't care if I, I get counter, I wanna play that. The position 3 and 4 usually synergize way more, and usually they are stronger, more high health, where the poor position 5 is just, you know, Crystal Maiden. No. So when do you pull? This is a creep wave. If the creep wave, let's go here. If the creep wave is here, this is where your position one is gonna farm three. You don't want to pull. You literally don't need to do anything. Maybe you can half pull the range creep. Okay. You need to block this camp. Okay. It's important to block this camp. Otherwise, I can just pull. The lane is gonna get pushed, and then the lane is gonna be here, where the enemy position three. He's gonna farm freely. He's also under the tower, so we can't really dive him. Okay? And he can retreat to the tower anytime. And also, if you're gonna pull, you fix the lane again, what happens? Give you one scenario here, okay? And this is, you know, when you... I'm pretty sure you know that when you go to pull, you usually... Your position one usually dies. Okay? Perfect. So, keep that in mind that if the lane is ultra pushed, if the lane is ultra pushed, you want to single pull, it's okay to single pull just because you get to right-click it really fast, so you'll make sure the lane equilibrium is gonna be around here, okay? So you have to right-click it really fast. If the lane is here, you can just get the half pull, and if you're also late to pull, just like I am right now, but instead of 231, it's 251, for example, I get the stack, and then pull the next one, and then I full creep wave, okay? I know that I'm talking a lot, and it's a lot to take generally, but you know, I, I try to make the video as valuable as possible. Viable? Probably that's a word. Um, that's the first one, of course, and let's go back a little bit. Um, you have to understand that this skill just doesn't come just like that, you know? You actually try to build it up for so long right now. For so long. You see how I try to actually pull at least one range trip, you know? Now, let's go back. Do you see my items usually? I'm like, okay, I can get the boots, I can get one more mango, I should also get a couple of cards here. And why do I get the boots? Because this laning, sto uh, this laning stage is actually over. The laning stage is over. We're just, I got first blood, which like gives me a lot more gold. If it wasn't first blood, I would probably go for something like wind place, one mango and a couple of cards. And I already have a lot of consumables to work with. That's why I can get away with boots. If I, tr if I had to waste all of that, I would actually have to bring all of that back, you know, more mangoes, more tangos, more salts, because the laning stage is not over, okay? We get the kill again, and at this point, you know, you, you know that you're so strong, let's go back because I did a mistake there, you know that you're so strong that you can get away with anything. And do you see how I got the kill and I just left? That was a mistake. Why was it a mistake? Because Crystal Maiden parts by this one, two, three. So one, two, and 
I need to get this arcane aura. So I should actually lead more XP here, you know. I should lead more XP and I just regrow it instantly. I should get more XP to get my level 3. Now I can leave. Now I can leave. You see how I'm late for the pool? So I'm just stacking. What do I do in the meantime? Try to see if my troll is actually fine. He's doing fine. You know, maybe he gets jumped on. The lane can still get lost, right? I see air spirit in the mid lane. What do we do? We instantly place... Um, we instantly try to apply pressure, okay? Um, lastly. Ward. Because something I, I mentioned to say in the beginning. Usually you want an observer ward in the lane, okay? But since a position 4 usually wants to take it in the bot lane, and if you don't give it to him, he's gonna, like cry and you know be dissatisfied you wanna in the you wanna wait until um the first observer is actually you know off cooldown so you can pick it up and then you wanna bring your courier okay so in the first courier you wanna see if you need more regen if you need more mangoes tangos or like clarities and you'll bring an observer word to place it here and let's go back do you remember what when I told you that you don't want to trade here right now with um with the air spirit because air spirit is actually a melee hero and he can't really trade inside the creep wave so i should play under geometrical with him hopefully that's working on the other side it's the same thing here but why do i trade with him because i know this guy's alone so i'm afraid that you know if i trade with air spirit let's say he's here i'm gonna get caught and uh mars can easily you know uh join him but right now that's not the case, right? He's alone. I can use all my mana on him. And usually you want to screw up with the position 3 more than the position 4, okay? Think about it. The position 3, this Mars, is a hero that's going to make my troll's life miserable later on. Viper, of course, as well. But I can't do anything about Viper. Why would I trade with Air Spirit and not with, um, and not with Mars? And with the Crystal Maiden, it's like a little bit easier to do both. But with a hero like Disruptor, I see so many Disruptors, for example, or even Leech using their spells on the enemy position 4. Why? Why can't you just use... Sorry, why can't you just use that on the enemy position 3? So he can buy more regen, so he will waste more gold, so he will have less items later on to deal with your post one. I, I, I actually don't understand, okay? The only reason... And I mentioned, you know, Disruptor and... Disruptor and, screw, and um, Leech. Just because these heroes are sacrificial just like maiden what does sacrificial mean that means in order to win the lane you need to buy a lot of regen and a lot of mangoes and a lot of clarities a hero like trend a hero like maybe bane question mark a hero like undying are not really that sacrificial they will win their lane and they will have items just like a little bit like like lion but a hero like cm will have their levels because she'll most likely gonna find kills but she will not have items why is that just because regeneration, you know, tangos and salves are actually so much cheaper than, you know, mangoes and clarities. Mana is way more expensive than health. And heroes like Trent, for example, and heroes like Undying mostly trade health and they need to ship health to win the lane. Okay? Food for thought. Okay? So I'm just trading with him. We find the kill, right? I just, I really want to, to show you that again. It's it's really simple. It's 2v1, and you constantly, you try to build it up. Look at that. One spell. Two spells, you know. Three spells, you know. Mango, four spells, to find one kill. And this is what, what I'm saying. With this skill, if the lane is still going on, and it was not over yet, what do I do? I just bring more consumables. Because you see how I just wasted all my mana to get one kill? Is it worth it? Yes. Do I get XP? Yes. Do I get items? No. Okay. And then what do I do? Deny the Mars at full creep wave, right? And you, you kind of see how it all comes, you know, uh, combines. Let's go back a little bit. And hopefully I'm going to, like, end this, um, maybe not end it yet, but see it a little bit more. One, two, okay, three. What if my troll does, does, doesn't come? It's okay. He's farming freely, Mars is not farming, okay? Simple as that. Now, I have such a free lane, you see how I just bring more clarities? Because clarity is more value for mana in terms of mana. Mango is not that value, but I like the regeneration, that's why I usually go three mangoes, and also I know that I'm gonna make the most out of it. Um, I'm trying to, to get my Trunkle Boots here, which like, in all support you just get Trunkle Boots, right? And I know I have a free lane top, 
So I might as well start moving around. Trying to TP mid doesn't happen. Okay. So I have nothing better to do than to actually go to snipe their bounty. I was actually going aiming for the six minute rune uh, bounty. And I'm just taking this big creep so they will not farm later on. So. Last thing I can do is, since I see no one top, the laning stage is over. I need to start acting like it's the mid game, even though it's six minutes in. Okay. And you see, okay, let's go back a little bit. I really want to show you that. I'm actually rotating to the mid lane. And you see, I'm level four, but I have one, one, one build. And I usually like as maiden player, right? I usually like the uh, frostbite level four. I think it's super strong. Low cooldown, right? Low cooldown. Uh, you get to use like every three seconds, a lot of damage, but you always keep the skill point because look what's happened. I see that I'm like, okay, two heroes, this, and my Viper is having like, uh, sorry, my Razor is having a hard time. So this has a bigger range, movement speed more, attack slow more, two heroes. So I might as well use up there. And I think this is the main reason why we actually got the Viper kill in the first place, you know, um, now we're just having a hard time here. Another, like, Crystal Nova, get a lot of value here. And of course, we just die here. Um, happens. I think that's really good, um, really good replay to see what's going on. You know, how to play the lane and explain a lot of the fundamentals. But right now, let's jump on the second replay to actually see what happens if you play a little bit on the autopilot, if your positioning is not that good. If you actually, you know, sometimes you just play mindlessly. And this happens to me as well. So let's go through that. Okay, replay number two. And again, we have Crystal Maiden. And with an Ursa, super strong lane again, like to troll. And we get to play versus Bristleback and... I think it was Pods, I think it was Snapper, I can't really recall, but we're gonna see. Now, first of all, mistake number one for myself, I get to play versus Bristleback. I realized that too late playing on autopilot, 1 a.m. in the night, right? What does this mean? I need a stick. So I'm gonna get all my mana I need, instead of like three mangoes, I'm gonna probably, uh, instead of like three, these three items, I'm gonna go for a stick and then get some like one mango and then bring up all these extra items the moment we have, you know, uh, the moment the Observer words up and the moment um the moment the observer is up and the moment you know uh we get the bounty so we can with the first tip we're gonna bring more regen more mana usually and more observer uh more observers maybe even center so let's move like a little bit okay so again it's the same plan you place the word there and let me show you that because i get to do that a lot especially with your like trend protector you place the word and sometimes you just want to go like this way Maybe, you know, if someone plays the word here, you're gonna cut him while he's going back to his base. You're gonna click his items and you're gonna know if he has placed the word or not. Because usually they have like one empty slot. Right. Anyway, again, I, I'm not really sure about contesting. I prefer not to do that. This game we did, we were not really sure. Like, we, we were like, okay, if we see someone bot, we're gonna contest. If we don't see anyone, we're not because they have the pods. So we see... Uh, we see like all these heroes bots where we are like, okay, we can do that. And it starts. So the same thing as previous, post 4, which is usually all similar hero, but the same as a range, okay? If you trade good with the enemy post 4, you go for it. If you don't trade good, you don't go for it. But with Crystal Maiden, you know, she doesn't have a lot of damage, low armor, not a lot of health. And you don't really want to waste Crystal Nova on a hero, you know, like Scarab Mage, for example. So you usually want to focus on the position three. Okay. I'm like, I even say that in all chat. Their parts. Okay, that's um that's funny. That's funny. So it's a bristle. He's alone. What does this mean? 2v1. I get to see parts in the middle and I'm like, okay. Hit him. Bristleback. Ascar. What else? Uh, these heroes are not strong level 1, you know, people think that they are strong level 1, no, they are not. So I get to hit him a lot, right? And here's like the mistake I did. Do you see how I'm playing? In my attempt to be aggressive, like, okay, pods, and I just die instantly, right? Super bad for me, super bad. I shouldn't position myself there. And it's like, this, this kind of shows why if you're not good with positioning all the time, this hero gets punished a lot. What do we hate? 
the most. We said that previously, we hate if two heroes are on top of myself and they are full HP, I cannot actually fight them back. It's not the type of hero that can do that. If I'm undying though, if I'm trend protector and I get hooked, I'm like, okay, let's fight, you know? It's not that easy as Crystal Maiden or as Bane or as, or as Lich. Even as the hero, if you're like full health on Bristol and on Pat, I just can't do that much. Okay, so um, I'm getting the stick. I'm bringing some items to my Ursa. And what do I need right now? I, you know, I kind of learned my lesson. I need not to get caught. And I need to play on the other side of Pats. Also, level 2 Ursa, level 1 Bristol. And you see, it's still a Pars bike. And we just get this hero down, okay? Giving the items to my Ursa. And now again, it's 2v1. So what do we do? Go for the Pats. Get the Pats, play aggressive on the Pats, right? What do I need right now? My level 2. I get my level 2, I'm like, okay. Half pulling. Why do I need the half pull? Because the lane is not that pushed. Okay, the lane is not that pushed. I can get away with the half pull. And I don't really care about this half pull right now. But I'm like, okay, this is a really good matchup for me. Ursa versus Bristol, okay? Now, I, I, I'm I, pretty confident Pats can't really kill me at this point, you know? Even if he hooks me, you know, I can just run away. And lastly, you see that I haven't skilled spell yet. I, if I need Frostbite or it, if I need Arcane Aura, I will go for that, depends on the situation. If I'm almost level 3, most likely I'm going to get Arcane Aura. If I do, I'm not almost level 3 and something happens, I'm going to skill Frostbite, okay? And there you go. Look, look at their health, okay? And I'm level 2 right now. And that means I recall playing this game. I say, okay, we can fight that. You know, I'm kind of screaming on the microphone. And like, I'm like, fight. Frostbite. Stick. I just turn back and see, and you see what it means if they're not full health, you know? And now it, it, it turns out to be really good, right? This turns out to be really good. But I really want to show you that again. What, why it means to, what it means to actually have two spells, you know, and what it means to actually being able to turn the fights. And this is not actually the best example, but kind of shows that, you know, if they're not full health, even this um, Crystal Nova is really important because if Bristol has a little bit more health, then we are actually screwed. I get hooked and look at that. Frostbite, stick, turn back, and it works out really good, right? Of course, Ursa, God player, sure. If we die, for example, if let's say, um, Ads doesn't die and Ursa dies, it's still fine, okay? Lastly, this is like something I want to say for the higher MMR because the carries are not actually that reliable in the lower MMR brackets. You always like, at, at least for myself, I always want to have an extra salt for my carry. So she's like, my Ursa is like no health, so I bought another, um, I bought another salt for him. You see, I have one and I buy another one. I bring his items. And then what happens is, you see how we get the kills, but I don't get XP and I don't get gold. So, I still have a lot of consumables to work with, okay? And now, I'm just trying to half pull. Why half pull? Just to deny. There is nothing better for me to do. Bristle is level 2. And Urs is coming and we just kill him. And you see, I, I really want you to, to, to understand that. Even if, like, we don't get the kill, right? Do you see how we actually you try to build up the kill potential, you know? If he's like full HP, my Urs is not gonna come, you know? Even that and all the right clicks, he's like, okay, now I can come. Because look at his health. Now I can come. That's that's killable, you know? But that's this is killable. This is a kill that you can get. So laning stage is really good. And that's something I really want to talk about. That I, I feel like that's really good because sometimes position fives, they don't rotate and they shouldn't rotate. If I if I need to give you a rule, and the question is when do you leave the lane? I have only you know as a rule I I, I can say just never. You never leave, leave the lane. If you if your post one does not, uh, if the pattern of the lane stage does not change, if your enemies, for example, if you have a good lane and your enemies keep coming and you keep killing them, why would you rotate? If you're actually dying and your position one is dying again and again, I'm gonna show in another example, another replay about that, then yes, you should move, but you should give the call, right? Generally, 
The reason why I move is look how low HP this is. And I'm just hiding here, okay? I'm just hiding. I was I felt like a little bit, let's say, sad because I felt like he he might have gone for the top rune and maybe we just get the kill. But I'm like, okay, pads, okay? Now I'm gonna show pads a little bit fast. Do you see his triangle boots? I need to hit him, otherwise he just regions. Okay? And right now I feel like I'm just getting the kill here. And now look at that. I really want you to show that. Usually I always go for the aura or for the um, frostbite, right? But now, what spell do I have available? I'm like, okay, he's coming. I'm just get the kill. And we just get that. It's a simple rotation. Why can I rotate though there? Why am I allowed to rotate? Because the top lane is practically one and there is no one top, if you think about it. This guy has no TP, right? We just killed him back to back. He has no TP. I have nothing better to do rather than do what? Stuck? That's also good. But I feel like moving, you know, when they're low HP, it's actually really good. And again, I feel like this, this is a really good move. This double kill allows me to do what? Get boots again. If I have to fight for the top lane, probably that boots are not boots. There are wind plays, more mangoes, one clarity and three, uh, I don't know, uh, like two clarities, one salve and more mangoes. Stacking, why can I stack now? There is no need for me to pull. There is no need for me to deny anything, you know, like half pull or single pull because no one is here. Okay. And what do I do right now? I get to move again. I have nothing else to do. And let me show you that again. I'm like, where is Bristol back? Why is Bristol not here? I'm not going to follow the classic laning pattern. If no one is here, I'm going to do what? Screw up with the position three and let my Ursa free farm. So what am I doing? I'm searching for the Bristol back. Right? I scan there. I'm like, where is he going to farm? Triangle or that lane? And that's that's really good. And finally, I get to go for Aura level four. I need to I need to get at least one value point on this. Look at that. I'm still moving. I'm still trying to gank. Is it gonna work? I don't know. That's why I'm gonna place a sentry here. Okay. And let's go back a little bit just to see, uh, like, to understand if you can actually kill or not. I see my necrophage is level six. I click, he has Reaper Sight, so yes, I can kill, you know. I'm taking that he doesn't have ward, I'm just hiding here. And we just go for the kill here, I think that's really good. What do I do? Check the rune, I'm like, okay, Bristleback is top. We go kill Bristleback, right? I know that this is what you do when you win the lane, just, you know, you try to bring the, the classic laning pattern, uh, laning pattern from the beginning, okay? That's a little bit unfortunate, by the way, because Ursa just killed him. Um, I think that's good for the landing stage. Um, yeah, from now on, we just start killing. Um, game turned out to be really good. But how about we show one game where you don't really have that strong of a lane and you kind of screw up at the same time? What do you do then, right? So let's jump. This is game number three, or this is like example number three, where sometimes the lane is not gonna work out. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes. This is like the previous, like in the previous example with the Ursa and the Bristleback, I felt like I didn't actually play that well. I was a little bit on autopilot. And this game, I, I actually, you know, I remember that I screwed up as Crystal Man last time. I, I might as well be more focused. Okay. And sometimes this is an example of why positioning matters a lot. And sometimes, you know, shit happens. And sometimes, you don't really have that strong of a lane path partner, right? What what I mean is right now I have the Morphling. By the way, Morphling and Terrorblade are the two heroes I hate the most to lane with. I feel like they're so hard, they're so squeezy. Um, so you kind of need to approach the laning states um, a little bit different. What I mean, usually a hero like Crystal Maiden, Elite as a hero, um, these are heroes that you will fight for the lane until like you, you have nothing else to give. You'll just keep spamming, keep spamming, keep applying, keep having good positioning. It's not as, you know, um, as simple as an Ogre Magi with the Orb of Venom where you just ignite and hit people and you just throw the position 4 out of the lane and then just a 2v1 scenario and you just focus at post 3. It's not as simple as that. Or like a line where you just go mana drain level 2, you know, and you just 
you can just disengage because you get to start with the wind lays because lion just doesn't need mana and hopefully uh, i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna make a video about lion later on okay um also you know a hero like grimstroke and willow and crystal maiden like these heroes kind of require a good lane part partner to make it work so crystal maiden is a lane dominator as long as her position one allows her she's good with pa anti-mage juggernaut lifestealer but not morphling not um Terrorblade. there are a lot of cards that she's not good with again the classic word and look my items observer maybe more tangos because i understand that i'm gonna have a monkey uh and i'm gonna get cursed a lot of times by the axe and then look at that more um tangos and clarities so right now we just see monkey there um hog flazer by the mars i'm just using a spell here getting a you know some good xp but even this skill is really good because we're gonna get level two faster um so what do we do we wait for the observer okay wait for the observer then we're gonna ship items so what do we do we see an axe and i see the monkey here the moment i see the monkey do you see how i just run away from him i learned my lesson previous with pads i'm gonna have better positioning okay and what do i do look at that that's perfect double the damage with crystal nova and secure the range group and like i, I receive like a deal on damage by the way but so do they okay and the moment i'm under tower what they do i know that they have no more damage they have no more damage and all they have is right clicks and they have the armor from the tower and i'm safe here so i'm just right click as much as i can okay um now why do i play here because i feel like i can get a lot of right clicks and she can't fight me back because i'm under tower but the moment I'm not under tower, I'm just playing, you see how I'm just playing way more careful? Now, a mistake I usually do when I get the see Axe is, every time I have Crystal Maiden versus Axe, is I really want to Crystal Nova the Crypt Reef to actually remove the buff. But every time I get, um, I get yelled by my carry, okay? So, um, do you see how I just play a little bit more careful? Just because this might happen. Right now, okay, that's a <laughs> nice bag. Um, I'm not under tower, right? So this like a little bit annoying. I'm like a little bit scared. Okay, so this guy just jumps and I try to actually queue again both of these heroes. What do we need? Level 2 power spike for both me and Morphling, you know, both me and Morphling. And look at that. Level 2, level 1. How can we take advantage of that in easily? Two. And even like I got level two faster, okay? I got level two faster because we got the kill in the mid lane, got some XP. But even if that wasn't the case, what happened is that I secured the creep, I get level two instantly, my morphine gets level two instantly, double the spells, we can just kill him, but I'm out of mana. Oh wait, I have mangoes. That's why you need the mangoes. And I'm like, okay, fight, 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 fight. We get the kill, we kill the post three, the post five dies. I'm gonna take that trade anytime because I have a Morphling. And Morphling doesn't really have a power spike as a hero, just like Terrorblade, just like Spec. Usually these heroes, the more levels they have, the better for them. Okay, it's not like PA, PL, Draw Ranger, where, you know, okay, level Slark, level six power spike, and you know, we're good, okay? And I'm gonna like make a comment about that later on. So what do I do right now? Do you see how many consumables I actually wasted? Did the lane, lane stage over? No, then what more consumables? We're gonna get something like a stick or something like a stick might be good sometimes. Um, something like a wind lace when the landing stage is over. Lastly, did you see that word here? Sometimes it's gonna get deworded. Okay, I see that he's gonna get deworded. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna place it on the same spot and hopefully I'm gonna bait him in. Um, and we are, we're hopefully I was hoping that we we're gonna get the kill, but you know, um, we didn't. It's okay though. What happens though could be one scenario. But the laning stage is just too pushed, you know, just too pushed. What do we do then? Clarity? Because what's our next goal? To actually pull, you know? Am I gonna stack and pull? No, I'm gonna single pull. I want the laning stage. I actually have pull. I somehow did it. Fuck, I want the single pull, you know, shit happens. And I get the wind lace. Why do I get the wind lace? I have 250 gold and I still have a lot of things. So I can get, you know, I can get away with buying something for myself. Okay, so let's 
look that. Do you see my positioning there? This is what I mean. Thank you, Gavin, for the uh, monkey, <laughs> for the monkey bag as well. But I'm using my spells because I want, if I get jumped, to actually being able to have a return kill like previously. And I have a monkey on top of me, and boom. And I still feel confident that they have nothing on me. But if I'm not full HP all the time, I'm actually buying another. Uh, if I'm not full HP all the time, like you see how I just make the most out of my mana. And even mango so if i die if i die at least i'm gonna be out of mana if i die for example right now i'm gonna be really sad because i still have a lot of damage and even i'm gonna mango then i'm if i'm not gonna take the kill just to because the mango is gonna be value because i'm gonna crystal nova to both of these heroes okay and i, I can tell you like from experience it's really annoying it's really annoying to play versus axe if you have any plus five really annoying this character is just so annoying now, I'm not really gonna go for Aura here. I don't know if I'm gonna need the mana to use something else. Okay? And I went level to Crystal Nova. I know that I'm gonna die here, so I might as well just make the most out of this. Usually, again, I never almost never go level 3 uh, on a spell. I usually go 1 for 1 build, maybe get my ultimate level 6, okay? Um... And what they do, they keep coming to the lane, I need to keep assisting my Morphling, you know? The lane stage is almost over for, in my mind, you know, we're not really doing that well. So what do we need to do? Like, if he's here, I need to keep assisting this guy. Give him more tangos, give him more consumables, use my spells instantly, so my mana regeneration is gonna, you know, my natural mana regeneration is gonna actually start making value. And again, what do you do? And this is like a bad positioning. Right. Even then, do you see how we take the return kill? Like, ask yourself, were we? Are we going to take the return kill if I don't use my crystal knob in the beginning to actually, to actually start to, you know, build up the kill process? No. Remember, the position five wants to harass. It it will not take a kill. Usually, the position three and four will kill. Let's say. Grimstroke, Sun King, or um, House Knight, Hoodwing. These heroes will just instantly kill you. They will not give you a chance. But look how Crystal Maiden, or it's a hero, or it leads. Just slowly builds up the kill. It requires time. It requires effort. And sadly, it requires a lot of mana. Okay? And hopefully, again, this Crystal Nova level 2 kind of helps a lot. Okay? Um, I do get the XP here, and that's really good for me. But what happens right now, I don't have TP, I use a smoke to go there faster, and I'm still on my way back. If you see the scoreboard, right, it's 2-0 for a Morphling, 0-3 for my Crystal Maiden, but I'm gonna take that every time, right? Because it's a lane that's that's really bad. I'm using myself on my Morphling, and right now I tell myself that this is the last, um, let's say, consumables I'm gonna buy, because I start to need to invest on myself, okay? And I need to be super defensive here. Again, I try to use my mana. I try to build it up. And like, do you see how we got half of his health? So on the next attempt, we might be able to get the kill. Hiding, nothing to do here. And I recall in the game, I told myself, don't overextend again. Because dying is not a problem, but later on like if you just keep dying you you don't have a game even a support like you just don't have a game and this like one mistake i did i i forced the kill real hard and then look at that i i that was so bad positioning for me i don't know why i did that i feel like we could just get the kill um but most importantly thank you monkey bag again most importantly look what i did i'm like okay i'm gonna get the most right click and once she's going leave i'm gonna use um like i'm gonna use frostbite okay but look what happens i'm like i'm about to use it and just get that i'm just dying and this is where the laning stage is over what do you do when the laning stage is over at least the laning stage for me i can't come back here right i just can't come back here so what does this mean for me well you still you still i, I like i'm so desperate i'm not even gonna skill aura right now i'm like okay what can I do in this game? Okay, who can I play with? Probably I'm gonna play with Ember Spirit. 
He's a hero that's the most level. He has a lot of damage with the fist. And if you see their heroes, you know, maybe not uh, Storm is a little bit mobile, but Cr Crystal Maiden is a really good versus Storm, at least before he gets PKB or something like that. Um, I can kill these heroes. They are not actually mobile, okay? What do we do? I'm going and I'm gonna smoke with him. Okay, that's all. And you see, we just run top instantly. Mars is a god, by the way. We just run top. And we try to, to assist him. We try to find kills. The laning stage is over for me. I need to make... I need to start doing something, okay? And you see? Level 2, let me show you that. The moment I see that something is gonna happen, and the moment I see a Storm, Storm is quite a mobile hero, even though he's out of mana, right? Level 2 Frostbite, double the spell, double the damage, Crystal Nova here. Really good. And then, what do I do? I see Silence are low. Naga is not the type of hero that's gonna help him. Okay, so we try to kill Silencer as well. Let me show you that again because people don't get that sometimes. I even use Mango in the mid game. Mango is really important in the mid game as well. Okay. Okay, let me show you. Then you know they're just rotating storm response, and it happens, right? What do you do though? Honestly, what do you do when you have such a bad game? Bottle refill back to five because Crystal Maiden is not a hero that has a level six power spike. Yeah, sure, okay. Um, her ultimate is good, but it's not like I'm a lion or um, a silencer or um, brain like or a bane. You know, okay, I'm gonna get level six, I'm gonna make something happen. Sadly, Crystal Maiden just doesn't work like that. Sure, she wants a level seven, eight, nine, ten to have like her nukes, um, pool, but freezing field is not gonna happen here because they have um. A silencer, personally, I love the 1-3-1 one, one build and then just pick up the freezing field. But generally, that's not really gonna happen. Okay. Um, Dewarding and getting the Tome of XP, getting my boots finally. And you see how I can't come out, come out from the lane stage. I just have boot wing plays, which is okay, which is okay. Like, network wise, it's not that bad, right? Um, frankly, I don't really need more as a hero. I mean, even if I have Tranquil the Wand, I'm still gonna die. And what do we, we try to do right now is just take the top tier one, create the farming pattern for me more. You know, this farming pattern, you know, too. Um, I just want to show you one last thing. This is how I have five spells here, and I'm level six, even like with Tom, because I don't know if I'm going to use my ultimate or not. I still don't know, okay? So I just want to show you a little bit why it's important to have the skill point. The global is used. What does this mean for us? I can use actually my ultimate, right? So I'm level seven, and you see, I get one skill point here, and I get one skill point here. So the call has been used. Bundle strike is about to, use, to be used. Global is used. So, and I just ulti this. Um, sorry, I just frostbite this storm spirit, and all of a sudden we just have a really good fight. But that, this has nothing to do with the landing stage. It's just a little bit more food for thought why the skill point is really important, generally. I think that's it. I'm gonna like make more guides right now, but I really wanna do a sum up. So, you usually wanna pick Crystal Maiden in higher MMR, just because in the lower MMR, no one's gonna pick around you. You know, nobody's, nobody's gonna say, okay, I have a Crystal Maiden. I might as well just pick Ursa, Chaos Knight, um, Dagger, and PA Antimates. This hero's in turn really good. Coffee break. Level 2 Power Spike, 2 Creep Waves, Secure. All of them get level two before they they do. You know, get the level two before they do. Four things. Lane ward really important. Do, uh, block their camp. Make sure you have the ward at yours. Always have a sal for yourself. And crystal maiden is just like all post fight, the range post fight. Gate to get jumped on. Always find opportunity to use crystal nova on both of the heroes. Always find opportunity to actually use your spells. And lastly, um, what's important to understand is that. CM is a beast in the lane and struggles later in the mid game. So you want to actually, you know, at least win the laning stage, right? And I know that sounds a little bit hard. That's why it's a hero that I don't suggest in lower memory games. But I want you to pick Crystal Maiden if you're like Divine and above, or just pick a better version of Crystal Maiden. That's also useful in the mid game, like it's a hero or a lead. Uh, with um, Ice Path is really strong from the hero in the mid game. Um, you know, you can't really counter Ice Path with a. BKB if you get Ice Path. For example, with Crystal Maiden, if you get Frostbite, then you can get countered. And with Leech, you know, 
um, Frost build is really strong and also uh, Lich is really strong as a hero. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, sadly, Crystal Maiden is a lane dominator, but she has her downsides like spending a lot of gold on um, consumables, especially mangoes and clarities. Hopefully that's helpful. If you do find helpful, hopefully I'm gonna make at least for December uh, a lot of guides. Um, just subscribe. How how did I say? Like smash the subscribe button and blah 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 and likes. But generally, no, it does help me a lot. Even even one comment that would be great. Um, and hopefully I'll get to see you tomorrow with another guide. GG. Boom.